All right, moving on to habit two is owning your career. And this is in your mind. Remember, we're still on the internal private victories. Having the mindset that this is my career, it's not something that's just happening to me. It's something that's gonna develop into more than a job if I want more than a job, if I want to own my career and be happy with my career. So and along the lines of being proactive, that proactive mindset isn't just about your case files or your transactions, your closings. It's about being proactive, putting the time in to develop your career. In other words, don't wait to ask, you know, to be asked to learn a new skill. Your mindset becomes, this is my career and I'm the only one responsible for how successful it is. And I like to say this because every single successful paralegal that I've met over the last 25, 30 years has this habit. The ones that I specifically have been asking in the last 10, 12 years said that developing this one habit, this change of their mindset, changed the trajectory of their career. Early on, they realized that they and they alone had the power to choose where their career would go. I love this quote. It's the one single quote that sums up this habit perfectly. So first, have the mindset that the driving force of your paralegal career is going to come from you. If you want work that's more challenging and stimulating, go get it. But there are some outwardly things that you can do to help change your mindset as well. But as Earl Nightingale said, the driving force of a career must come from the individual. Your job is owned by the company or your law firm, but you own your career. So one active step that we can take is if you have these annual performance reviews, look at those instead of, you know, oh no, it's the time of year where people are gonna evaluate me and that's gonna determine my raise or my bonus. Instead of looking at it like it's the performance review period, look at it as it's career development period. Here's a perfect example. How many of you have been to a car dealership where they do some work on your car? Or maybe it's even a call with a customer service rep for your cable or phone company. And then they usually say towards the end, you're going to be getting a survey from our corporate headquarters and I'd appreciate all fives or all tens if you're pleased with the service because that's how they rate me. If you weren't pleased enough to rate me that high, I'd like to know now so that I can do something to fix it. And the last time that happened to me, I thought, you know, we can all learn an important lesson from that. If your firm or organization has a formal performance review process, even if they don't, why wouldn't you ask the same thing of the people you spend hundreds and hundreds of hours working for each year? Why wouldn't you go to those attorneys in advance of your performance review not just once, but on a regular basis throughout the year and ask, is there anything I could be doing to better support you? If you were to rate my performance today, would it be anything less than outstanding? If so, can we talk about why and what I can do to improve it? Or on the opposite side of that, if you would rate me outstanding, tell me why. What, what is it that you appreciate the most? And I'll keep doing more and more of that. You know, these people that the car dealerships and our customer service phone calls that we have, we're only exposed to them for minutes and they feel comfortable enough asking us how we would evaluate them. So that's taking charge of your career by saying, I'm going to go in and talk to this attorney and say, what could I do to better support you?